There are a couple of things to consider when creating a new schedule from scratch in Microsoft Project. Stick around and I'll share five tips that will help you create a schedule or at least get a solid start. Now don't forget to like and subscribe if this video helped you because yeah, that just helps the channel a lot. So starting a complete new schedule uh, from start is not something that you will do a lot. Most of the time you will be either copying a project schedule from a previous project that you did or you might want to use templates that are designed by uh, your organization or some of your colleagues. But just in case you want to start from scratch there are a couple of things that you need to be aware of. So let's open up a blank project because that's the starting point of every project. Now it is completely blank and that is one of the key problems here because first thing that we want to do and tip number one is we want to activate the project summary row. This row gives you a complete overview of the whole schedule and is a huge help when you want to for instance import it to project for the web but that's a previous video. So what do you want to do? You want to go into the uh, Gantt chart format section and here on the top right there is this little check mark which says project summary task. Shows you the summary task for the project. Yeah, okay. So let's do that. And here you see that it has a task name. It has a duration and a start date and end date. The 1st of February is when I started recording this video, so that's true. And it will retain everything that you have down below in the rest of the schedule. So it will retain the complete duration of your whole project. It will tell you the start and finish date of the whole project. Dependencies, well it has none because it is the project itself. It will not have any resources other than budget resources, but that might be a video altogether. Um, and it will show you costs and it will show you baseline data about the project as well. So this is a very important task. Now before you go and start clicking and typing task names, make sure, and this is tip number two, to switch on the auto scheduled mode. The auto schedule mode can be switched on through the link down here below where it says new tasks will be manually scheduled. Well, that is actually something we don't want to have because auto scheduled is a task mode that gives you more flexibility. It also uses the Microsoft Project scheduling engine and that is something to keep uh, in mind and, and getting used to basically. And that is one of the main reasons why we say, okay, well, take a training course in Microsoft Project because Project does certain things that you might not be familiar with. Now, to make sure that you have the correct project task uh, type or the correct task type, start typing a task here and you will see that blue icon here. That blue icon tells you that you have an auto scheduled task. Now, if for whatever reason you want to switch back to manually scheduled mode, you can switch this or flip this to manually scheduled mode and gives you that pin. Um, but, but as I've seen more than my fair share of projects, please go to the auto scheduled mode because it is way better for advanced scheduling and even basic scheduling. So instead of um, talking too much about this, I'll put a link in the show notes and this is a link that is from a session in 2014 even uh, by Daniel T. Rainier and it is by far the best explanation on why to go for auto scheduled mode instead of manually scheduled mode. So make sure to view that session as well. The link is in the show notes. So with that, Tip number three, let's make sure that we don't start off with blue calendars in our schedule. And with blue calendars, I mean this 
situation where I say, well, okay, my project doesn't actually start at the 1st of February. It actually starts at the 15th. And just like that, I created a start no earlier than constraint. And this is a constraint in our schedule. And as you can probably tell from the way I'm saying this, that this is actually a limitation in what you're doing within project. Because you only said that your first task starts on the 15th. Well, actually, if I start another task, it will again start on the 1st of February. And then you need to go in here and you can go down and just fill that up to be the 15th as well. That just is extra work. So tip number three, set the project start date. And this project start date will make sure that all of your tasks start from that date until the future. And it will have dependencies, of course. So let's just remove these sections here. And I did the control Z just in case you're wondering what kind of magic that was. So finding the project start date is actually quite easy. You navigate to project, then project information. And here you see that there is a start date. There is also an option to go and schedule from the end date or the finish date from a project. But there are a vast amount of reasons why not to do that just um just because you can <laughs> and there's there will be a link in the show notes uh, to uh, a certain article that i did way back um so start date let's start in the 15th of february and then you see that it doesn't have that constrained calendar and if i start a new task even though it is currently the 1st of february this is a task that will start on the 15th of February because I set the project as a whole to have a start date in the 15th. So let's do a little bit of recap. We set the project start date. We changed the manually scheduled mode to auto scheduled and we set a project start date so that we don't have those constraints. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into actual scheduling and actual project management. When you're starting with a project, make sure you make sure you have a good WBS or work breakdown structure. This will provide a clear overview of, to anyone who's looking at the schedule and it should at least have phases and milestones. So instead of starting with tasks, I'm actually going to click on insert and I'm going to start with a phase. And I'm going to be very poetic and I'm going to say phase one and it has task number one and two and it has the first milestone. And a milestone is of course zero days and a phase is actually something that we want to indent. But we're not going to do that just yet because we're first of all, we're going to think about everything that we want to do, all the phases, all the tasks, all the milestones. So let's have another phase. Phase two, task three. And maybe I have a task, task 3.1 and another task 3.2. Maybe that will have a milestone. Uh, milestone for subtasks. And then I will have my uh, task four and another milestone. And then I'll have my phase three. And we'll have one long task. task and a milestone. No, oh, it's late in the evening here. Can't stop. Can't type correctly. 
and I actually want to have a final milestone as well. So let's make sure that all these milestones are have zero duration. And if you click somewhere down on, on row 16 and you, you type in a date or a, a duration, well, that will create a new task for you. And we don't want that, so we're going to delete that. So these are milestones. Here's another milestone and a milestone for the subtasks. And I think I got them all here. So let's indent. So we're selecting all the tasks that are in phase one. We'll navigate to task and we're going to indent. And that's that green arrow pointing to the right. And we have these tasks here as well. And we're actually going to have four and another milestone in here as well. And we're going to indent task three and its subsidiaries as well. And we're going to have phase three in here as well. And right from the start, if I now am going to look at my whole schedule and I can do that by navigating to view, going into outline levels and outline level one, I now have my project, project one, which has three phases and a final end project. Well, that is awesome. Let's, let's create a example project. Let's have it getting a name and I'm going to save this as well. I'm going to save this in my TPC folder. And this will be available for any subscribers to the newsletter, obviously. So right here I have my phase one, two, and three. And if I select all these phases as well as the end milestone and I right click on that and I click on add to timeline, I get this beautiful timeline. Well, it's not beautiful yet, but it will be. Just have a look. So I'm going to expand the whole view again and I make sure that I'm in actually going into the Gantt chart and all subtasks. And we have an, even we have task three that has subs or subtasks. Now remember that project summary task that we had way in the beginning? Well, you also have outline numbers and this is a number that is in front of your task telling you what place in the WBS you actually have. Very useful. So moving on to my last advice I want to give you here in this video is close the chain of dependencies. And this is very important because a good schedule has just one open end and that is at the end of the project. And that's why I have this end project milestone in here. There should be no loose ends because by definitions, a project is a finite entity and should end at some point. And with that ending of the project, all tasks should end as well. One easy way to find out if there's loose ends is by analyzing the successor column. Only the last task shouldn't have at least one successor. So we know that the predecessor is a normal column and we can add the successor column here as well clicking on successors. Now watch what happens if I select all these tasks and I go navigate to task and I set them as being linked. Now these tasks are now linked together. I can also link the milestone one to task 3.1 and I can link all these tasks together as well giving you a nice clean overview of all the numbers. And remember that I said that only ta uh, the last task shouldn't have a successor. Well, what about phases then? Well, phases are just a, are just a title or a header of the actual activities that's being done. So phases are an exception here because phases actually don't do any. So let's link these as well. And let's link the other milestone to the long task. And what you see happening on top here is that actually you have that nice timeline. 
right from the start and now I can change the duration if I want to I can change this to one week two weeks uh, one week uh, seven days and now remember seven days is actually five work days from one week and adding up two days after that so this takes into account weekdays as being a days off so it doesn't take that into account when you're scheduling if you do want to have weekends go for elapsed days but that's again another video because this is already starting to be a long video um so six weeks and there you go so going into view selecting the entire project and now we have only the end task doesn't have a, so a successor all other tasks have successors and if they don't have successors well actually then they're probably summary tasks have a look all of them are summary tasks except the end project task which is correct so very nice so summarizing if you're starting from scratch and you won't do that a lot because most of the time you'll copy a project or you will use templates from your organization but if you are doing something completely new in your organization it's completely new and you don't know what you're doing so build a new schedule from scratch but make sure you activate the project summary row you switch to out of schedule mode and there's a link down below for why um, set the project start date provide the WBS and close the chain of dependencies those are key factors for having a successful project schedule and if you're interested in more information on what is required for a good schedule you might also like my blog article called minimum viable project schedule there's a link in the show notes for that and you might also want to watch how I build a program schedule. Maybe dive a little bit deeper into resource leveling. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video and like watching it. Click that like button, hit subscribe, and I hope to see you again soon.